So what is the difference between the Brompton C line, P line, A line, T line? You've got all these lines. We want to know what the difference is. What we have here are the C line and the P line. The C line is what everybody thinks of when they think of a traditional Brompton. It's an all steel frame, chromoly steel. It typically comes with either a two speed, three speed, or six speed drivetrain. It's the all around general purpose Brompton. The P line next to it is a new model that they introduced in 2022 as a replacement for what they used to call a super light model. The difference here is that on the P line, the front fork right here and the rear frame back here are made out of titanium. And they also redesigned the entire drivetrain so that now you have four external sprockets instead of the internally geared hub. And that shaves some weight off the bike as well. So this is about two and a half, three pounds lighter than a C-Line that's comparably equipped. So it's a good bit lighter. And you notice that mostly I find when you're carrying the bike versus when you're riding it. Yeah, it feels a little bit lighter when you're riding it, but the big difference is when you're carrying it around. It's got a few, one or two other little features. One of them is they've redesigned the way the seat post and the frame interact with each other. So that now if you drop the seat post down part way, you can now tip the bike onto its rollers and roll it around like this, and it doesn't come unfolded. If I were to try to do that with the C-Line, the front end would start to unfold as soon as I tipped it back like that. So they redesigned the, the seat post relationship there so that you can do that, which is kind of neat. I don't find that's a huge benefit, but some people really like rolling around by the seat, so that's that's big for them. The C-Line and the P-Line both come in electric options, but we are only going to talk today about the non-electric versions. Now, the other two lines that we don't have in the store, dealers typically have not been able to get the A-Line um, because that was something Brompton was selling direct from their website. They did just announce to dealers that we are going to be able to get a small number of A-Lines if we want them. The A-Line is the completely stripped down, no frills Brompton. You don't get fenders, you don't get a rack, you get several older components that were discontinued on the C-Line several years ago. It's just not as nice a Brompton, but it's a way to get a Brompton for somewhere around $1,000, which is nice, but a lot of people end up having to do upgrades later and they may as well have bought a C-Line at that point, in my opinion. Now, but if you're just trying to get started and you're willing to do the upgrades later and, and you accept that, then it might make sense. And then the T-Line is their new fabulous, the entire frame is titanium bike. There's the T-Line 1, which is a single speed, and that makes for a really, really lightweight bike, but no gears. And then the other is the T-Line Urban with four speeds. It's a relatively limited range of speeds, but you at least got some options for climbing hills and flat and downhill. I suspect we're going to see more sales of the Urban version just because people like gears and they like options, but there's probably a market for a one speed as well. So far, they have only been selling them direct from Brompton to the consumer. Dealers supposedly are gonna be able to get our hands on them sometime this year, but nobody's told us anything more detailed than that. Making the whole frame out of titanium really shaves a lot of weight off of it. It's got the same drivetrain as the P-Line. It's got a little bit different set of tires and things like that. Every, everything they could do to make the bike lighter, they did. It's a really cool bike. We've only seen one so far that a customer got. People seem very excited about it. So after you've decided which one of the individual lines that you want to go with, the A, C, P, or T, you then have to make some other decisions. In the case of all but the A-Line, the most important thing you have to choose is which handlebar configuration you want, because there are three different handlebar configurations and they cannot be easily changed after the fact. So you have the S or low handlebar that people who like to ride fast and are used to road bikes tend to gravitate towards, or shorter riders. You have what's called the medium or M type bar, which is kind of a average height handlebar for average riders who are used to riding, say, a hybrid. Then you have the H handlebar or the high handlebar that puts you in a more upright seating position, you know, kind of like a Dutch bike if you're a shorter rider, but if you're a really tall rider, it's a more neutral position like a hybrid. Then the next thing you have to decide after that, assuming that you're looking at a C line where you have options, you have to decide how many gears you want for the kind of riding you're doing. You have a choice between two, three or six speeds. Here we find in Northern Virginia, the vast majority of our customers are buying six speeds. In fact, that's all I normally keep in stock on the store floor because it's what everybody wants. The three speed is a little more limited in terms of range and it weighs about the same as the six speed. 
The two-speed weighs less, but it also has a really limited gear range when you only have two gears. When you're looking at the P-Line, you have no gearing choices. It's a four-speed, and it's gonna be the four gears that they give you from Brompton. And likewise, the A-Line, you only get a three-speed internally geared hub. That's the only choice you have. So if you wanna pick and choose gearing options, you have to be looking at a C-Line. Price difference between a two-speed versus a six-speed or a three-speed. The two-speed and three-speed are about the same. A six-speed is going to be about $120 more, but it's worth it. Yeah. And only slightly heavier than the three-speed. It's probably a couple ounces heavier than the three-speed. It's a, probably a pound or so heavier than the two-speed. Urban riders gravitate towards the two-speed sometimes because they want to shave as much weight off as they can. Then you have to decide the seat post height. Uh, standard telescopic and extended are your three choices on seat post heights. Standard seat post is good for people with an inseam up to about 33 inches, give or take. If you got longer legs than that, you might want the extended, which adds two inches to the length of it, um, but also means that when the bike is folded, the seat sits a little bit higher, so it takes up a little bit more room. And then the last option is what's called the telescoping seat post, where it's in two sections, and you can get even more height out of that than you can out of the extended, and it collapses down about the same height as the standard seat post. So a lot of people like the telescoping for that feature. Put a rack or no rack? And lots of people in the Brompton world have a strong opinion about the racks or no racks. My general experience with my Bromptons is that I find the rack helps me in terms of rolling the bike around when it's folded and it makes it more stable when it's parked. So if I'm putting stuff in my bag up front, it's less likely to tip over. On the other hand, I almost never carry anything on the rack. So as an actual rack for carrying stuff, I don't find that it's super useful because you have to take everything on it off once you go to fold the bike. Like I said, it's better as a stabilizer than anything else. I have two Bromptons, one has a rack, one doesn't have a rack. I do find it a lot easier to roll the one that does have the rack. But you'll find plenty of people that say that they just can't imagine having the rack because it's so much extra weight and it's just a few ounces. And the most important decision, the color. Oh, the color. You've got in the neighborhood of 10 color choices. So if you like to pick and choose colors, you probably want to get a C-Line. And there you've got a wide variety of colors. There's a couple different shades of blue. There's this fire coral, a racing green, a really pretty deep red. Uh, they've got a new matcha green. And you're looking at the P-Line, you only have two choices. You have black or you have gray. They're both kind of a metallic finish. The A-Line, you can only get white. The T-Line is only a gray, I believe, at this point. Have there been any new updates for 2023 Brompton? As far as the, the componentry, they didn't really change anything. So the difference between the four bikes, the A-Line is the most basic stripped down, minimalist Brompton. It has older components and real basic features. The C-Line is the mainstream what 99% of Brompton owners buy and use and ride every day. All steel frame, good solid components, around $1,800. You have the P-Line, which adds some titanium components to it. The front fork and rear frame are titanium and a different drivetrain that shaves about three pounds off the weight of the bike, coming in at about $2,800 there. And then the T-Line is the all titanium bike, really, really light, and it's around $5,500. The reason to buy a Brompton is because it's a great riding bike that folds up really small and is super easy to transport. I, I think the Brompton is really a, an engineering marble. Hope to see you riding!